thank you for the opportunity and uh, um, this uh, this talk is made very easy and i can skip a lot of slides because dr mypal has covered very extensively very nicely about the cross linking and uh, many of this coming to the customizing why should customize on this part and the cross linking is not anything new this chemical cross linking is there for a long time where you use a chemical to establish a cross link which is commonly used in our footwear leather bags or purses wallets and everywhere it is used what used in the carnia is a, this is a cutriod is the commonest agent used in cross linking in uh, biology biology in human biology we use the cardiac valves cardiac valves are cross link uh, with the cutriod head but they extract out the excess one uh, which is uh, highly toxic but in carnia we use a physical cross linking no chemical is used the riboflavin which is used is a works as an activator that is not uh, that will not stay permanently in the carnia it comes out it, it is a uh, uh, washed up over a period of time and uh, what bonds covalent bonds their forms in carnia is a physical bonds not a chemical bonds so this is idea is picked up from the dentistry by dr tiesiller in dentistry they shifted they shifted a long time from uv light they use a photo initiator and they use a uv light to make the cross linking of uh, you know, epoxies which they fit it into the cavities uh, but they shifted from there from uv light to blue light but still in ophthalmology still we stick on to the uv light because that is best absorbed by the riboflavin and uh, these three guys they 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 changed the world of keratoconus treatment and uh, unfortunately the griger is uh, no more seen uh, one exactly is not in seen most of the times we see sporal and mostly we see tiosilar tiosilar is clinical work and the sporal work on the laboratory wise calculating all the dosage necessary and the lab safety was done by the gregor wallensack he is a sporal design the uh, energy uh, on what based on the physics and the biology he has designed that 5.4 joules for 8 mm diameter with riboflavin is 0.1% is optimum thing that is necessary for the cornea and safe and optimum thing that is necessary for cornea 500 microns thickness so that is important this is designed for the volume of the cornea volume of the corneal tissue not for the square surface area though energy is calculated for square area the total energy is calculated for the volume of the area taking point 500 microns is the corneal average thickness so he developed a energy plot also at the same time long time back some 15 20 years back for each corneal tissue how much is the energy necessary but unfortunately this one is nobody follows the 5.4 went as a standard into our minds and in the books so we are traditionally following all our non phenomena like 5.4 joules became a, a standard in our minds but actually sporal has given a graph where for example if you are using 3 milliwatts or 9 milliwatts what is the energy necessary for each corneal thickness he has developed it almost 10 to 15 years back and is given according to the his calculations physical calculations he is a scientist he is not a ophthalmologist so coming back to my talk why we should cross customize at all for normal patient for example this patient look at this patient and he had a small keratoconus definitive we did a cross linking patient is fine is unaided with beautiful vision after one year after four years the area became flat you gain to 38k now 36 so this patient if you look statistically another patient 37 and this is what what happened over a period of time starting with 2007 2015 2016 over a period of 10 years is uh, carrying drop from 44 to 36 so if you look statistically it's a wonderful result 10 diopters flattening it comes in the graph is the most significant and beautiful results but look at the patient this is a horrible a patient from 6966 dropped down to 5060 and he lost vision this is why we need to customize cross linking this is another one a central cone if you cross link 8 mm yeah it doesn't make any sense for example this patient with a cross linking this is the one after one year patient improved unaided 69 vision very nice flattened area in the center this is after some time this is after few years and this is one more year three more years this is uh, the patient immediate post op and this is uh, demarcation lines so 
this patient now has got only around 660 vision so it's totally dependent on contact lens and uh, coming back to the cones you have a cone which is a quite big and you have a cone much bigger and you have a cone which is much inferior and you have a cone totally inferior there's no pupillary area involved at all and much flattening in the superior and there is a globus cone and there is inferior cone with a little bit superior involvement and there is a totally inferior cone and involving only the area and there is a superior cone and there is a very small central cone applying the same technique of 8 mm and 5.4 joules for each and every case irrespective of uh, except for the thickness it doesn't make for me any sense in my clinical practice so as dr maypal has uh, explained already there are two systems of customization one is the avedra system where they change the fluence they give the highest fluence for the steepest cornea 48k 7.2 joules and they reduce for periphery the peripheral cornea they reduce the fluence thinking that the strongest energy is necessary for the weakest cornea where there is a steepest cornea and there is second system I can this is actually for system, but I'm going for in this way. The customizing for each patient using the standard equipment which we are having because the Avedro, the Pixel, and the Sister Pixel Two is very expensive. The total energy is variable. We can always change depending upon the thickness and size. We have to change location. We can change, and we can add on PTK or PRK. What you can customize cross linking. It all depends upon medicine beliefs. and interpretation of available literature clinical observations and what you assume is correct and hypothesis and most importantly what you like to do that is what why there is so many variations in the practice there is always two sides for a coin so keratoconus what i believe is a local weakness which progresses to become global but there is a another thought opposite thought keratoconus is a global disease starts one local elevation and progresses so there are two opinions in everything many opinions two important so the deepest cornea i believe is the weakest area it can be anywhere irrespective of thinnest location but there is opposite view other people argue thinnest location is the weakest point elevation is a consequence of biomechanical effect i believe that strengthening the weakest and steepest area strengthens the cornea and prevents further progression but there are my i argue there are people they will argue with me keratoconus is a progressive global disease so wide area of standard treatment is necessary to arrest the disease over a period of time and prevent further progression a stitch in time saves nine this is a one so i believe that you weaken the area you strengthen that's good enough there is always opposite argument a cloth that is bad even if you stitch one place it can break in another place and you may need some more stitches in some other area i believe that visual acuity is paramount importance in treatment and critical parameter for success of treatment and there is opposite argument shape is the most important factor and flattening is the most important uh, denominator of the effect of cross linking and k max is the uh, important critical parameter for assessing the success of the treatment so coming what we can stand uh, customize in our standard cross linking the energy can be varied from 3.5 to 5.4 joules in a standard machine but in avedro some of these amateur people they recommend 6.2 or 7.2 as the standard not 5.4 and they go up to 10.2 joules from 6.2 but in standard other all other available systems 5.4 we take is the highest uh, necessary depending of the thickness of the cornea as coral has given we can always change the energy de- delivered and i take into consideration uncorrected visual acuity if uncorrected visual acuity are 69 612 or better sometimes 66 i use very less i use 30% less energy and if the accepting spectacular power is very small cylindrical power a lot of people they don't accept though there is a lot of keratoconus you diagnose and you think is advanced disease the spectacular power they don't accept much they will be able to treat comfortably 612 and very small power i use the high power they use i use more energy if the spectacular power is very less i use less energy so that there is no hypertrophic shift in the future and as i shown you the drawing the thickness drawing is already given by scoral we can start with that and we can fine tune over a period of time and the location size and shape i take this into consideration inferior central 
area. Four to eight millimeters. I vary again. I don't use standard for eight millimeters. And half circle, three fourth, one third, and full circle. The three fourth and one third circles and half circles we are trying to develop with industry. Maybe within a one year, six months, they will come out with those. And the, for simple half, lower half is involved. I use a paper, cut uh, glove paper, and uh, soak it in riboflavin. I will cover the superior half, which is a flat cornea, which I don't want crossing. I don't want it to become flat. And this is how during uh, irradiation, so they are superior. Uninvolved portion is protected, and another way of del uh, drug delivery is we use a riboflavin intrastromal injection with a fine 30g needle. But for this, uh, you cannot use riboflavin readily available in the market. You have to use an injectable one, which you have to import from Switzerland. And immediately after that, the thickness will be increased from 400 from 300 to 600 or 800 microns. Very safe limit. Then you can do cross linking. And you can safely do the radiation. This is another one. Sometimes we do even after injection, we cover the superior area. And this is transepithelial. We can do it with the injectable technique. Then PTK is another modality which is uh, we found we, we very useful. This is not centered onto the pupil. We have to decenter PTK onto the cone. We have to measure where is the where is the cone center from the center. That's quite easy in uh, topography. And the amount of uh, ablation we do is uh, from 55 to 75 microns depth, depending upon the stiffness of the cornea and the uh, keratin. And the zone is again 5.5 to 6.5 millimeters. The transition also 1 to 1.5 millimeters. That depends upon the amount of flattening you need. The concept here is the epithelium is thinnest over the apex of the cone. So usually we measure it's coming around 35 to 40 microns. So if you do a 55 microns, it will knock off. 15 microns of the apex of the cone, which will corrupt up to six to seven diopters of uh, stiffening. The thinnest cornea is not the steepest cornea. That's what we found both from uh, topography, pentacam, and from uh, OCT studies of the cornea. Most of the times, the thinnest cornea is not the steepest portion. So usually you can do a good amount of tissue ablation at the steepest cornea, most elevated part, and make it flat. And PTK removes more tissue in the center than periphery as it is. So that also helps in removing the decentered PTK, remove more on the elevated, most elevated portion of the cornea. You can limit the, another advantage here is you can limit the cross-linking only to the cone area, non-cone area, which is already flat in character corners. You don't do cross-linking, it doesn't become much flatter. And once the Bowman's layer is removed, what we found, the penetration of V2 is much faster and the effect is much pronounce uh, that also helps. For example, this is the case. And what you do is you say measure the center of the cone and you measure from the center of the pupil. So here it is around two millimeters. You input that into your machine. I use a V6. It will allow up to three millimeters of decentration. I don't know about the other machines. I think Schwind allows. I don't know about Allegra which allows so much decentration of the PTK. And for example, in this, we input x-axis 0 and y-axis minus 2. And this is a, a surgical procedure. So when you do a uh, PTK, it's a decentered, as you can see. It is a conic area, which is getting ablated. The, wherever there is a, you can nicely see the zone. This is a, the hyperfluorescence is the one still epithelium is intact. The one which is no epithelium intact is the dark area in the center. That is a conic area, which becomes flat. The results are quite good. For example, this is the pre-op. This is the post-op in one patient. This is the pre-op where the cone almost is uh, dropped down by more than 50%. And this is an irregular cone with an irregular bow tie. It becomes a symmetrical bow tie. There are many, many cases. I just don't want to uh, waste your time. We almost, we do PTK nowadays, almost 70% of our catacones, we do PTK and C3R. The key point is, the more the duration of uh, you apply UV, maybe the total energy is the same, 5.4 joules. You apply for 30 minutes, it gives more effect than you apply for three minutes. It doesn't obey the uh, bunsen rosco law here in uh, clinical practice. That's what proven by most of the studies have published also. So they settled somewhere now with the 9 milliwatt with a 10 for 5.4.
so the best character visual acuity is decides my treatment plan and i believe you careful look and uh, i suggest you also to into the how much energy you need to use uh, depending upon the best character visual acuity and uncorrected visual acuity and corneal topography location and size of the cone is important to study and apply the treatment to that area instead of globally applying to all area and giving 8 mm full uh, zone of or uh, irradiance the visual acuity is paramount importance and it should be kept as a main parameter of success or failure of treatment not on k max that's what i believe and in case of doubt do less than more that's my philosophy thank you very much for this opportunity and for